everyone, Mitch from Rain and Pores here. Couple of announcements before we start today's video. I have my fluid art doodle templates available up on my website, which is rainandpores.com.au. So you may not be able to see these properly. Let me try and focus my camera. So these are a series of exercises that I've put together to help you build the skills necessary to do embellishments and doodles on your artwork. Um, they're only $5 each template, which I think is pretty good steal. Um, and even if you're not using them to embellish your artworks, they're great for the kids, they're very entertaining, and they just teach you how to follow the lines um, and get you into the rhythm of making patterns that you can transfer onto your artworks with acrylic paint markers. My fluid art workshops are still available. There are still spots. There are four workshops in total starting in May. There's one in June, one in July, and one in October. Head to rainandpause.com forward slash workshops. Link's up on the screen now. Um, and book your workshop today. Um, they're in Penrith, held by me. We'll be learning how to create these amazing Dutch paws that I'll flash up on the screen. Um, yeah, it'll just be a hell of a lot of fun. And also, PawCon is happening in Las Vegas in August, which is absolutely amazing. I can't believe I'm being flown over there to, you know, meet everybody and finally get a chance to go to the USA. Um, so that's going to be an amazing um, three days of fun. So August 6th till 9th, uh, live in Las Vegas, Green Valley Ranch Hotel and Resort. Get your tickets at PawCon.com. All right, guys, now it's time to get on with the video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rain and Pause. I'm Mitch, and today I'm going to be doing a test piece for a large table that I want to do. So the table that I have is 1.4 meters by 60 centimeters wide. Um, so quite a big, long table and a little bit narrow. So I'm working on a 12 inch by 24 inch canvas today to sort of mimic that dimension. It's probably going to be just a little bit longer on the table, but this will do perfectly fine for what I want to try and do. So um, what I want to do on the big table is I want to try and recreate the Butterfly Nebula. So if you've never heard of the Butterfly Nebula, it's obviously a nebula in outer space. And it looks like this. I'll try and flash the image up on the screen now. Thank you, Editing Mitch. So I want to try and replicate that on a canvas with a bloom. Now, the way that I hope to do that is to pour a puddle in the middle and spread my paint out nice and thin across the edges so I can spin this and get it to spin you know, and spread along the long axis. Um, and in the process of doing that, I only want to blow out my paint in one direction. So I'm going to put my paints in little lines here and use my hairdryer, I think, or even my mini blower to just blow them out in one direction. Then to create that little tiny bit of definition in the middle, I may go over with some pillow paint in the center. Now, normally when I do these sorts of paintings, I've got my puppy pool set up and I have puppy pads underneath but I am trying to do my part to save the environment so I don't have my puppy pads down today. So this is gonna be a bit of an adventure to see if this actually works. Now, the colors I am using today are Matisse Indigo. I've got Matisse Southern Ocean Blue. I have Matisse uh, Australian Red Violet. And I have some Amsterdam Titanium White mixed into my pouring medium. Now, this is just going to be to let my pigments show up. And the pigments I'm going to be using today are from this little piggy. And I have three brand new pigments. This one is called Crescendo. I have Flamingo. And I have Unicorn. Now, you'll see exactly why I've chosen these three pigments in a minute. Um, I don't know if these will have been released by the time I show this video. Um, but I can tell you now, I am going to be holding on to this secret for a very, very, very long time. So by the time you see this, I will have done many paintings with these pigments and I absolutely love them. So let's get started. The pillow paint that I'm going to use, oh, and I'm using um, my Amsterdam Lamp Black Cell Activator with Australian Flowtrop. The pillow I'm using is uh, Tormund's, no, yes, no, British Paints. British Paints Outdoor exterior um, low sheen in black. It's already tinted black, which we get it from Bunnings, um, which makes it super, super handy. Um, and it's pretty much the perfect consistency straight out of the tin. Now it is super, super hot here in my flat. So this is gonna be real interesting. Um, and I've got to get my ladder out because for me to be able to blow this out with my mouth um, or to make any adjustments, I'm gonna to need to be able to get up high to do what I want to do with this. So, this is going to be a challenge. I'm hoping I can do what needs to be done. Um, and the thing with the Butterfly Nebula is it doesn't have that super intense cell structure in the middle, but it's got lots of pink 
and green and blue interference in it. So that's why I've chosen these colors because they're all beautiful color shifty colors. Now I am going to hook up my hair dryer and my mini blower before I start and have them on standby because that's most likely what I'm going to use to blow these blooms out. And like I said, I want light feathery edges um, instead of defined cells. So I'm going to have to work really quickly because like I said, it is stonking hot in here and I don't want my paints to start drying before I have a chance to work with them. So let's just go for it, I guess. So let's do the edges first and I am going to apply a fair bit of pillow to this one so that everything stretches and reaches the edge, but also so it doesn't start to dry on me before I have a chance to work it. I'll just use what's left in this container. And uh, I was using these as a one use container st uh, thing. And the other day I was like, what if I can rinse these out? So it turns out I can rinse them out and reuse them. Um, so I'm already recycling by using them again after their intended purpose, which was as a container for flour. Just gonna bang some of those bubbles out. Um, but then I'm reusing them again by washing them over and over. So I'll just do that in the taps outside. Now, the idea is to blow one direction and then come back. So I'm gonna work really, really quickly here so that it doesn't start to dry. So, um, oh, what's the best way to do this? In a line? I think so. So, line here. And I do not want a lot of color because this is going to spread. I want negative space. So I'm just laying all of my colors on top of each other, sort of in front of one another. And the reason I wanted a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of white in this is because these pigments show up different over white and black. So let's go with a tiny bit of unicorn and then a tiny bit of flamingo. And then crescendo. And I may actually want just a tiny little bit more of unicorn in there because that's got the really nice color shifting thing. All right, so straight on with my cell activator, Amsterdam Lamp Black, and I'm going behind my pigments and paints so that when I blow this out, it's gonna blow over them. Okay, you ready? Now, I did a boo-boo and I had my hairdryer on high, but I've sort of got the effect that I'm after. Now, the Butterfly Nebula is quite rounded, so I may have to go back in and sculpt this a little bit afterwards. So I'm just gonna repeat the process on this side. I'm gonna dip my container into the paint, but that's okay because it's revealed a little swirly of color there. Um, now what's happened is I did blow up the pillow paint um, But that can cause some really interesting cell effects to happen as well, so I'm not mad yet Having just that little bit of white in there is also going to create a little bit of separation and contrast There's a chunk of something in my flamingo. Okay. Now, I've got pink here where I don't want pink, so let's just cover that up. And let's get our cell activator and let's blow this out again. So again, cell activator on this side. And I'm gonna try and blow that out bit more gently this time. Okay, not 
too mad yet. So now I'm going to grab my mini blower and just shape some of these areas. Okay, and now using my pillow paint, I'm going to paint in a little bit of definition in the center. So I'm just going to grab some from the edge here and paint in. Okay, that's pretty damn cool. All right, let's give this a spin. I'm gonna smooth out the edges and apply some more pillow paint so this spreads. going for negative space so I feel like this would be much easier on the bigger table because the hairdryer doesn't matter how much force I put on there the hairdryer is gonna blow that paint out exactly where I want okay let's give this a spin I'm gonna center it down this way a little bit let's give it a gentle spin Looking good. It's spreading nicely. It's spreading exactly how I expected it to. Got some gorgeous color shifts happening from those new pastel pigments. But I think I do want some more vibrancy when I do the bigger table. So I may include some of the regular piggies as well. So I'm just shifting the center uh, so I get more spinning or more color coming this way so i am going to move it off center a little bit and just give that a spin so moving off center versus tilting your piece in a direction you move off center if you want your whole piece to move in one direction and you tilt if you don't mind your cells going wonky. So in this case, I just wanted everything to move one way. And before I continue spinning, I'm just gonna finish shaping up this central area, just using my finger. So I want it to just be a little bit more sort of circular and contained. 
on that side. This side I think is pretty good. So you want to do that before you're finished spinning and while you've still got paint on there so that your paint will self level. If you do this afterwards and all your paint's already moved, you're going to have uh, dips and lumps in your paint, which won't look good when it's dry. So I can see that my fingerprints here where I've evened it out aren't quite leveling, so I'm just going to fill those in. Okay, now big spin to get the paint off, just to get it moving and leveling, and then gentle spins. Now in the center here, I kind of want to swirl it all together. to make it look like it's been sucked into a black hole. I'm going to grab a skewer for that to be a little bit more delicate than my fat fingers. And then I am going to grab on my fat finger a drop of paint and make it completely black in that center. Okay, now we're going to spin this out again just to get the paint off and leveled. really happy with how this is looking and I'm hoping it dries the same with no cracks. It shouldn't dry with any cracks because I don't have too much cell activator on there but I'm really really happy with this side. This side I think the cell activator was too much but I think the secret may be to actually blow the pillow out over the top of the colors. So let's just tilt this a little bit to get that center flat and go one more time with a spin and I'm just listening for the paint splatters I don't hear a lot more paint coming off so I am going to stop spinning it there and call that good okay, so I've got a tiny little bubble here which I don't want I may actually just torch this very, very briefly to pop some of those bubbles once it's over on my drying area. So this is what it looks like. Look at those gorgeous. Those were pastel colors when I put them down. Um, and you can see how gorgeous they've turned those interference colors that they have built into them. So I'm going to let this dry and we'll come back when it's time to put a layer on varnish and or resin on this. Having a ladder did not make this process easy. Alright everybody, so this piece is finally dry and I really really love how it's turned out. Look at those gorgeous new this little piggy pigments in there. So again, super hard to catch the color shift, but remember I didn't use any green in there. So any green that you see is purely coming from Flamingo. And that deep blue is from Unicorn and the deep purple is from Crescendo. So you don't really see the pastel colors in this because they are on a dark background, but you really see the color shift. Like on the side, look at that. All of that color disappears and you get those beautiful gold tones from all three of those pigments. But then you also see the paint colors that were used in here because they don't change. Um, they sort of hide and it looks like an aurora uh, behind those pigments. So the first thing I want to do is I want to embellish this with some stars. And I'm going to do that using my Molotow paint marker. This is a chrome marker. And I want to just dot some bigger stars, just circular shapes. 
at random points where there's a lot of black. And I do not want to overdo it, so that is plenty. Then I have a fine tip and a smaller nib as well. So we're just going to put in some tinier dots. Okay, that's it. Again, not wanting to overdo it, that already looks amazing. And then with my super, super fine line line, I'm gonna be careful not to touch where I've just dotted. I'm going to follow some of the curves in the center of this black hole. To create the swirling vortex in the center. And then maybe just a few thin radiating lines, just following the path of the paint. I don't want to add too much extra to the design because I think it's pretty perfect as it is. But that just looks really, really cool. And like everything is exploding out from that center. Now, we're going to wait for this to dry and then I'm going to apply resin to this and I'm going to add some more of those pigments in so we get really nice thin wispy lines. Okay, so I have set up my table and this piece is ready to be resined. So what I have in my little cups on the side here is the teeniest, tiniest amount of pigment and I've got Flamingo, Crescendo and Unicorn, the same that I've used in my painting. And I'm going to mix up enough resin to cover the surface of this painting, plus a little bit more because I stuffed up on a coaster. So I'll just do a top coat on that coaster as well. Um, so the resin I will mix with a tiny bit of craft glitter. And it's super, super fine stuff. Mine just came in these little bags. Very, very super fine. And I got these from the Glittered Pixies. You can see there. And this is 0.02 millimeter hex glitter if you're looking for it. Um, super tiny and it just gives a really, really nice effect in resin, especially over black. So I'm going to mix up using my Pixis mixing cup because I should only need about that much. And I will mix up 150 milliliters of resin, which be, should be plenty for this and my coaster. My coaster only needs 10 milliliters and I don't think I'll need that much for the top here. Okay, so I have dished out my resin. I've just poured two little scoopfuls into the cups with my pigments and mixed them around. So I've got this really lovely purple for the crescendo. We've got the gorgeous pale pink of Flamingo. And the deliciously pastel blue of Unicorn. So I have purposely added very little pigment to these so they are still translucent. You can see on my stick there that you can still see the stick underneath. That is intentional so that we can still see the wonderful design underneath. Now I'm going to put the glitter into my resin and the amount that I'm using is tiny. That's it. Just the end of my stir stick. 
and if I had to relate the size, it's the size of the cuticle of your fingernail. <laughs> very, very minimal amount needed. And don't worry, you'll see it. You will definitely see it, um, especially on a black base. So if the first layer goes really well, I won't pour a second. And if it doesn't, I'll pour a second layer. And we'll see how we go with that. Okay. I think we're good. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have enough resin to cover the trivet. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Alright. Let's go. So, I'm going to start from one side. Just make a border. Then, slowly fill in the center. And let's see, I don't know if that's going to be enough for the trivet, so we'll just wait and see. So, just using my hands to spread the resin around, covering the center before I go over the sides. Now, important to remember with resin, resin won't go where resin hasn't previously flowed. So if you don't touch a part of your canvas with resin first, resin's not going to stick there. It's not like water. It's not self-leveling in that it will flow by itself. It will only flow where it has contact with itself. So now that I've done the top, let's get a little bit on the sides. I'm just taking resin from the top, slowly bringing it to the edge and gently pushing it over the side, making sure that I'm using my fingers to rub it along the side and feeling where they're not gliding. Wherever they're not gliding means that you need more resin. And this is why I like using my fingers to apply resin, because you can feel it. You absolutely know where the paint is and where the resin is. that's that. Now I have a feeling that the weight of the resin is going to put a little bit of weight on the canvas. So while I have the chance, I'm going to pop some bowls underneath to try and prop that up. So I'm just going to pop these underneath in the middle and that's just going to stop the canvas from sagging. Okay, now let's see. I'm not going to do the trivet just yet. Let's do the design on our nebula first. So, heat gun's coming out. I've taken one glove off. And I'm just going to use the heat gun on low to pop some of these bubbles. Whenever I do resin work, I always do two heat processes. I use the heat gun and then I use my chef's torch. The heat gun will get that resin nice and warm so it's more likely to flow and the heat gun, uh, the torch, will pop any micro bubbles. And I can definitely see that gorgeous sparkly glitter in there. That was definitely the right choice. Now we're going to add the pigments. And I'm just going to add them in trails that start from the center. 
and make their way out and then using the heat gun I will soften those edges so that they're not full-on flat lines All right, now let's heat this up and pop some bubbles. All right, now I'm going to use my small blowtorch on the lowest setting I can get it to just heat the resin in small patches here Okay, this is looking super cool. Now I'm just going to take my finger in the resin and drag it through some of these areas to make it look a little bit more wispy.
That is beautiful. Alright. Gently heating up the resin around areas that I've touched. Make sure that there are no holes in my resin. Just looking from the side, making sure that everywhere is covered. And then one final pass with my big torch. Now it appears that everything is a bit top heavy on this side. So let's add some more over here. much much happier with that okay everything's looking great here now i'm going to use up the leftover resin on here hopefully it's enough to cover this trivet um, but if not i will quickly mix up another little batch and add that on we are back it's been 24 hours and i am very very happy with how this resin finish has turned out on my artwork here there are a couple of little imperfections, but nothing that I'm going to fret over because uh, overall the total piece is pretty damn stunning. Now I am going to put on some gloves before I handle this because I don't want to put any fingerprints in the surface. That would be um, undesirable. And I want to keep this as flat and pristine as possible because it looks freaking awesome. So let's lift up this canvas here see what we got so I did have to put a plate at the back here to sort of lift everything up because the resin was shifting to one side and that plate is going to cause me drama because it's very stuck to both the canvas and my mat okay never mind got it I got it all right now I need to find something different to these plates and bowls because um, I don't find that they're doing their job nearly as well as they used to. Um, the last batch of plates, last packet that I bought, um, they're really quite terrible and they're not good quality at all. All right, so this is the artwork. Let's see if we can show some of this awesome color shift. So look at that. There's no orange in this piece at all. But when you tilt it this way, you get like a really nice deep orangey gold. There's no green in here. All of that green is from Flamingle. Just look how stunning that all is. Now I'm going to turn off my main lights. So I can show you just under this spotlight or my roof light. How awesome that is. Look at that. So, so pretty. Having that uh, pigment in the resin as well adds another layer of dimension to it. So look, there's that beautiful gold color shift. And I don't think I want to sell this piece. I think this is gonna stay in my flat in my house. Um, but yeah, look at that. No tricks of the camera, just the tricks of the pigments. 
super super beautiful and they're really deep like you wouldn't expect them to be so deep and vibrant from those pastel colors but they actually are and that color shift translates not only to camera but also to real life as well and i love how wispy this particular bit where the light is right now how wispy that unicorn has gone looks super pretty and then when you tilt it at just the right angles those colors all change to their alternate colors so this piece i can safely say is finally finished it's been a couple of months in the making because i did this with the sample jars of pigment that i had received um, and i was so eager to try them i literally got home and poured with them that day so this is now finished um, once everything's done i'll remove i'll just let this cure a little bit longer i'll remove the tape and then this will be ready to hang in my home so i'll mount some wire to the back stick up a hook and that'll be ready to go all right guys that'll bring us to the end of this video and uh, don't forget if you like what i'm doing here like and subscribe and i'll see you next time bye